Yara. I'm Dave. I'm a tech investor out of Northern California. Um, but maybe before we start, I'd love to uh, just thank the EHF community uh, for an incredibly um, energizing but super uncomfortable week. Um, <laughs> and uh, for New Zealand in general uh, for uh, being such a great host to my family over the years. So um, as I mentioned, I'm a tech investor and like many tech investors, we try and back uh, game-changing uh, technology franchises. So companies that make big impact. Uh, we're a little different than most investors in, in this crowd in the sense that uh, we identify ourselves as growth equity uh, providers. And so uh, my fund manages over 15 billion in capital we write checks of 100 to 300 million, and uh, we do that across uh, growth equity, private equity, and public investments. And so uh, we don't do a whole lot of early stage. Um, but I think this perspective could be helpful um, in the sense that as your great companies uh, thrive and flourish to really uh, tap the global markets, uh, large capital is needed. So I came to EHF with the hypothesis that uh, business could be a tool in support of mission. And uh, I heard from a lot of my great fellows uh, some, some great support. I got a lot of great challenges as well. So I'm still, I'm still working this out, but I do believe that over time, that capital can be a big catalyst for global change. We see this in our portfolio. Um, and while this isn't truly social impact, but some of our brands and some of our companies have viewed the power of great product and highly profitable business models to really impact change at a global scale. We're reaching um, close to 2 billion uh, people with some of our, our uh, portfolio companies. And so as part of the EHF uh, week, I was engaging with some of our fellows and thinking through, well, how do I apply this framework to impact businesses? And I came up with a couple slides of pattern recognition, one, hopefully, uh, word of encouragement. I think some of the stuff is pretty basic, right? So uh, maybe start with strategy, right, at the highest levels. You know, start with a big market, right? We have a saying in our investment business, pick market over company, with the general idea that if you pick a big market with a, um, with a dynamic uh, and a problem that's large and growing, that you will, that, that's a great place to plant a business. Um, and so um, there's another way of saying this, which is uh, pick a field where time is your friend, right? You're in the flow of um, large, massive secular changes, and you get to rise with uh, the rising tide. Um, this is a little bit of a, a B2B context, um, but uh, some of the most scalable business models in the world tend to be consumer companies. They leverage things called network effects with the general idea that um, the, an incremental user actually increases the value prop of the, of the company, and so that as you grow, it actually gets easier. Um, and a community is much like this, right? As EHF grows, it gets more powerful and more powerful. Um, and so people really have this notion from a consumer standpoint, but I'd actually encourage all the B2B companies to think about this as well, because some of the best businesses we've seen actually have had biz uh, uh, business to business software models that the value proposition grows and the business gets easier over time. Um, and then in terms of go to market, uh, there is this notion of um, uh, in, in the very beginning, when you hit product market fit, you get this magic surge of demand. Um, and that actually does give you um, a really nice tailwind. But then when you try and break out, um, you really need the power of uh, paid marketing on the consumer side, sales capacity on the B2B side to really kind of reach that next level. I think, you know, just kind of this is general uh, goodness as you think about, uh, again, going from an intuitive smaller company to something that needs to scale uh, to 100 to many hundred uh, of uh, employees. Um, your strategy has to be defined in the metrics that you track, right? The, Metrics that you track drive your strategy and drives the focus of your organization. So really pick the metrics that matter. And the one metric that I've found across um, all of our companies, B2C, B2B, is the revenue renewal. It's a single uh, strongest metric that drives both growth and profitability. So it's one that I really focus on. But you'll have uh, very different businesses. And so just be really thoughtful about what you measure because that's what you get. If you are a New Zealand-based business and you want to build a big business, you want to tap a global market, I'd really encourage you to um, tap the global talent base as well. Um, and uh, this is easy to say, hard to do, particularly when you're smaller, right? If you have to duplicate infrastructure, if you have to go recruit overseas. Um, and so do this when it's practically possible. But what I would say is the longer you hold off from doing that, the harder it becomes. It really, um, you get this, um, this cultural uh, inertia associated with it. And so um, uh, really tactically, I would look for executives um, through your networks, through your own community, communities like EHF, they're overseas, you start there, 
Then you build an infrastructure and a, and a culture around this. And if you guys want to talk about this offline, I'm happy to do it. There's some really kind of practical hacks that make it uh, much more sustainable for people to work in your organization across, across time zone and across nations. And I guess the, the final thing um, I would encourage you that um, ideas and entrepreneurs, that's the scarce resource, right? Capital is not the scarce resource. And so um, if you get product market fit and you uh, build this great business, capital will travel. Um, I, uh, I live in Northern California. It's a long flight over here. Um, and I, bit, I come over here two to three times a year uh, for these incredible ideas and this incredible community. So uh, just as a word of encouragement, the capital will find you. Thanks. <laughs>